In this video, we're going to find the derivative as a function. So what this means is that we're going to graph the derivative and then also how to find the derivative. So we have already seen that the same type of limit arises in finding the slope of a tangent line or the velocity. We actually get to use the same um, formula here or the same form. So the derivative of a function f at a number a is denoted by f prime of a and it's this limit here um, as h approaches zero. Now we have to assume that this limit exists so that we can find the derivative. And this is commonly called the definition of the derivative. So when we ask you to find the definition of the derivative or to find the derivative using the definition, you're going to be using this form. However, just to um, change this a little bit, we're going to change our point of view. And instead of using a so that we have a number, we're going to replace the a with x. Thus, we have the function f prime derived from f, and now it's going to be defined as f prime of x equals a limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So it's basically the same thing, but instead of plugging a number in, we're using um, the variable x. So this is called the derivative of f with respect to x. Now remember that the value of f prime of x can be interpreted geometrically as a slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at the point x, f of x. So let's take a look at the graph of the derivative. So let's say that we have this picture below on the left and it shows a graph of a function y equals f of x. Then I want you to take this graph and use it to sketch the graph of f prime of x. Now I think the easiest thing to do is to always think of um, the tangent line and then what that tangent is. Because remember the tangent line, or sorry, I should say that what the slope of the tangent line is, that will give us f prime of x. Because remember f prime is slope. So let's break this up into um, kind of the left hand piece, the middle piece, and the right piece. So the left-hand piece, uh, we can see that we start off with a small positive slope. So if I drew tangent lines here, we would have all these slopes, but they're very small. So we start out with a small positive slope. Now, as I keep drawing tangent lines here, we can see that the slope of the tangent increases. So the slope increases until it is large and positive at the asymptote. So if I want to convert this information from this left side, so we said it starts off small and it's positive. So this is, remember, this is the positive side. This is the negative side. And it starts off small and positive, and then it gets larger, but still being positive. Okay, let's take a look at the middle piece. And the middle piece starts out with a large positive slope. at the left hand asymptote. So now there's no asymptote drawn in, but we can assume that there should be an asymptote here. And there's also an asymptote here. Okay. So when I draw the tangent lines to this graph, we can see that, sorry, it's probably not drawn very well. We can see that there are tangents that are almost vertical. So they're very large and very positive. Now it decreases to zero, so if I keep drawing these tangents, we can see that the tangents become zero right here on the y-axis. There's a horizontal tangent at the top of this bump, and then it continues to decrease. Now what, after we pass this bump, you'll notice that the tangents start going in the other direction. So it's becoming large. So you can see that it's like, let's say this was negative one, and this was like negative two, you can see that these slopes are getting much steeper. So they're becoming large, but they're also 
negative on the right side of this bump. So if I graph that on this second graph here, so it says the piece in the middle starts out with large positive slope. So let's say large positive is up here at the left hand asymptote. It decreases to zero at the top of the bump. Now notice the top of the bump, that's when it's on the y-axis. Okay, so when it hits the y-axis, that should give me a horizontal asymptote, which has a slope of zero. So I should be decreasing towards zero. And then after zero, we can see that that slope is small and negative, but then it gets very large and negative. So remember, the bottom half of our graph is the negative. So it's small and negative, but then it gets large negative. All right, so we have the last piece. Oh, oh, it's erased. So we have the last piece to take a look at. So the right hand piece starts out with a positive, sorry, with a negative, a very large negative slope. Now you might be wondering why am I starting um, on this side here. Whenever we talk about graphs, it's always nice and it's always convention to talk about the graphs from the left side. So from the left side here to the right side. So this would go up. There's an asymptote. We start from the bottom, curve our way around, and then we start up again at the top and then curve downwards. So it has a large negative slope near the asymptote. And as you go out to the right, the slope continues to be negative. So all of these slopes are negative, but they are getting smaller and smaller. So it flattens out and the slope approaches zero. So if we draw this on our right graph here, it has a large negative slope. So remember, a big large negative number means that we're starting down here. And then as you go to the right, the slope continues to be negative. So we're not going to cross the x-axis, but it's going to flatten out and become zero. So we're going to get something that looks like this. <laughs> now the graph of f prime of x shows that y equals f of x is not differential barrel everywhere um, because of the asymptote. So you can see that there's still the asymptote um, here. And there's still the asymptote here. And it's true because in the original graph, you couldn't, uh, you had to lift your pen up to draw it so there were asymptotes. So there was no derivative at the asymptote. So it's not differentiable everywhere because of the asymptotes. All right, so let's now take a look at how to find uh, the derivative using the definition of the derivative. So here we have um, the function 12 plus 7x. So we're going to say that f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. So if you recall, I'm just going to write this up here. It was f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So we were finding the limit as h approaches 0. So our function, it says f of x plus h. So we're going to take the x plus h and plug it into our x value. So we have 12 plus 7 and then x plus h. So that's my first piece, which is this whole function here. We have a minus, and then it says f of x. So f of x is simply the 12 plus 7x. We don't have to substitute anything inside. So we have 12 plus 7x. And all of this is divided by h. Now if I actually plug h is 0 right now, uh, you will see that this gives me division by 0 on the bottom, and this doesn't work. So let's do some simplifying in our numerator. So we have 12 plus 7x plus 7h minus 12. And then don't forget to distribute the negative. 
So we also have minus 7x, all divided by h. And this is, again, we bring down the limit as h approaches 0. So we have 12 minus 12, 7x minus 7x. Now, I don't want you to cancel everything off and just go, hey, the answer is 7. I um, actually want you to show this step by step. So we have 7h divided by h first. And then we're going to simplify that to be 7. And now, because this doesn't have an h value, the limit is simply 7. So the derivative of this function is 7. Now, that should make sense to us because... If I take a look at this graph really quickly, we would have a y-intercept of 12, let's say, and then the slope is 7. So this slope is 7, which says the slope is 7 in our function. All right, let's take a look at the second one. This one's a little bit longer because it's a cube. So we're going to say the limit as h approaches 0 x plus h, all cubed, minus x cubed, all divided by h. So we have to do a little bit of expanding in the numerator. So I'm going to say this is going to be x plus h, which I'm not going to multiply. But I do have two more. So we have an x plus h and another x plus h. So when I multiply those two together, I get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x cubed, all divided by h, and we keep expanding this, and we get x cubed plus 2x squared h plus xh squared plus x squared h plus 2xh squared plus h, h cubed, and then, oh, I have no more space, so minus x cubed, and all of that is divided by h. Now, let's simplify this one more time. So if I simplify my numerator, this works out really nice. I get 3x squared h. So notice the x cubes will cancel off. Plus, I have 3x h squared. And then I have 1 h cubed all alone at the back, all divided by h. Since all of these terms in the numerator have an h, I can simplify. And this gives me 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared. Now I'm going to plug 0 in to h. So we're going to plug it into here and here. So everything becomes 0 in the last two terms, and we only have 3x squared left. So we say the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared.